Hey everybody, it's Jasmine and today I am bringing back my Shotmasse Roundup reviews. So much has literally happened since the last time I posted a video on here. Life is just very unexpected for me, okay? I'm in my mid-20s, I'm going through a midlife crisis it feels like and that's a conversation for another day. But the fact is, is that I am here, I am ready to review, and today's video is going to be a lengthy one. So today I'm gonna to categorize all of my reviews into specific categories. I have complexion, eyes, lips, and miscellaneous. Now I don't have 100% of the things that Shop Missy has launched since the last time I did a roundup review, but I do have a high majority of it. So if you guys are ready, go ahead and buckle on in, and let's go ahead and get started. Shamasay launched stick foundation and concealers. Now, if you guys know me, you guys know I genuinely do not like stick foundations and concealers. One, because I feel like they're too heavy, and two, I feel like I look like a grease ball at the end of the day. But this foundation literally made me think otherwise. This is the A Plus Flaw Eraser Foundation Stick in the shade Nude. Now this is not 100% perfect, but it definitely made me feel a little bit differently about stick foundations in general. Now when I first tried this out, I tried blending it out with a sponge and I realized that it just took the coverage away. So instead I decided to blend it out with a flat kabuki brush and then topped it off with the sponge to create a nice smooth finish. The coverage on this is medium to full coverage and I like the fact that you can kind of customize how much you want on your face depending on how many swipes you do. The great thing about this foundation in particular is that it didn't break up into a grease ball on my face and it was fairly lightweight for it being a stick foundation. The only con I have about this foundation is that it did cling to my dry patches. So for future use, I would have to exfoliate right before I use this. In general, I don't really have a lot of dry spots, so for it to find one was a little humbling to me and it was something that I definitely had to get used to. I followed that up with the stick concealer in the shade Light Ivory. Now this formula is a lot creamier than the stick foundation, which I absolutely loved. If this formula was actually the foundation formula, I would not be mad at all. This is super hydrating for it being a stick product. I find that stick products are just so drying on me and I don't know why. And if you guys don't remember, I am a normal skin type with just a little bit of an oily T-zone. I like the fact that this stick concealer is super thin. It's just tiny. It will get into those little areas if you just need a spot conceal really quick and just blend out with the finger or if you just want to build up the coverage on your face. This is great. I really do like this and it was very surprising that I liked it this much. Let's talk about the CC cream. Now originally I had the shade light medium because look at me. I'm a light medium but light medium turned out to be super orange so I had to go back and buy the shade light. Now this claims to be a lightweight CC cream that instantly color corrects to give skin an even healthy glow suitable for all skin types. If you guys remember my review of their BB cream like six years ago, this is what I wish the BB cream was. It is super hydrating, so if you have oily skin, you do have to set this in place. If you don't set it properly, you will end up looking like a grease ball at the end of the night. So for me, because I do have a bit of an oilier T-zone, I like using a matte primer and I do set this with powder. And at the end of the day, I just feel like my skin has a nice, healthy glow to it. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't look heavy. It feels light on the skin. So I do really like this and I prefer way over the BB cream. The Flawless Longwear Liquid Foundation. Girl, this foundation is probably my new top favorite foundation that Shop Missé has to offer. I have this in the shade L2 and it's definitely a little bit lighter on my skin, but that is okay because the finish is literally flawless. I love that it's buildable, it feels lightweight on the skin, it doesn't break down on my skin to an oily mess, and it's super easy to apply. This builds up to like a medium full coverage, and nowadays I'm not really into super full coverage, so this is literally perfect for what I love right now. Before, I used to really love the full coverage foundation that Shop Missé has, but I just grew out of it. Like I love having a nice, soft, glowy skin, and I just love looking hydrated and moist. But the real key takeaway from this is that it does last on the skin and I love that about this. I feel like a lot of cheaper foundations in general, they tend to not last on the skin as long. So I really love the fact that you don't have to compromise money with quality for this foundation in particular. 
Heading into another new favorite, the Loft Concealer is definitely a high, high favorite for me. And I mean that in general, like compared to a lot of the concealers that I own, this is one concealer that I'm consistently reaching back for. I have the shade Light Cool 2. Compared to the other concealers on the Miss A website, this one is medium coverage and it's buildable. A lot of the concealers that are on the Shop Miss A website tend to be full coverage and a little heavy, and that's great for certain occasions, but for day to day, I really like the fact that I could build this up and it's super lightweight. The only thing that I can nitpick about this concealer is that the doe foot applicator does not hold a lot of product, so I have to consistently dip in the product in order for me to feel like I have the amount of product that I want on my face. But aside from that, this does not crease on me and I could wait a pretty lengthy amount of time before I set it with powder and it just, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just once it's there, it just stays and it looks like skin. Let's talk about the Vitaglow Tinted Moisturizer with Vitamin C. Now I have this in the shade Light and this claims to be a lightweight tinted moisturizer infused with Vitamin C that blends beautifully to blur imperfections. The skin tone adapting formula leaves you with glowy, smooth skin that feels hydrated and nourished. This is actually what I'm wearing on my face today and I actually really like this. Although it does lean a little bit more warm because I assume it's like the vitamin C that's in here. I am not a tinted moisturizer girly at all. In fact, I despise tinted moisturizers. I feel like they don't give me the coverage I need it to give. They don't last as long as I need it to last. And I just feel like it's a waste of money at the end of the day. So going in, I was thinking that this was gonna be very similar to the BB cream from the Shop Miss A website, but it's not. It's a little bit better. It's actually an in-between of the BB cream and CC cream. So it's a little bit less coverage than the CC cream, but a little bit more coverage than the BB cream. This also lasts a similar amount of time as the CC cream, and it's still buildable on the skin. The only thing I will nitpick about this foundation is that if I don't set it properly and I rub my face, it comes off. And that's a problem to me because it means that it's not setting itself. This is something that I would definitely see reserved for somebody who's looking for a very natural skin day and who's looking for a very glowy finish. Now, I would probably recommend this more to somebody who's on the drier to normal side as opposed to super oily because this will break down on the skin very similar to the CC cream, but this just won't set itself. Now I have a bronzer, I have a lot of blush, and I have a couple highlighters. Now let's start with bronzer because that's the first part of my routine usually. Now this is the Venetian Romance Creamy Bronzer in the shade Palace. This bronzer is just not my favorite type of format. It never is. I've tried the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer that's in a very similar format. This just isn't my favorite, but Color wise, it's a beautiful color. Now in the video, you do see me try and use it with a sponge and it blended literally away. And then I went in over top and blended it out with a flat kabuki and the color remained pigmented. In general, I just feel like potted bronzers just are a little bit more patchy than bronzer sticks. That could just be user error or it could just be the product, but this is just something I genuinely do not reach for, even though it does look pretty on the skin. Now we have the Venetian Romance Creamy Blush and I have the shade Cake. Girl, when I tell you a little bit goes a very long way, it's giving Rare Beauty a run for its money because it is so damn pigmented, way more pigmented than the bronzer. So I was really surprised when I first used this off camera, I was like, dude, this is way too much. Unpopular opinion, but I feel like when a blush is too pigmented, I don't really wanna use it because I'm the type of person nowadays where I'd rather build something up than just go in with pigment straight away. And that's just a personal preference of mine. Personally, again, I am not into any of these like potted cream products. I'd rather have a stick or I'd rather have it liquid. This is just not a medium that I personally love. However, if you are a makeup artist and your medium that you like working with are cream products, this is definitely it. Like it'll work as an eye base, blush, lipstick, like it'll do the thing for you. Personally, even though I'm a makeup artist, cream products are not the medium that I like to work with. I like to work with liquids. The rest of the blushes that I'm gonna share with you guys, they're all my favorites. 
So I'm gonna try and not say the word favorite, but girl, they all have a very special place in my heart. The first one that I wanna talk about is the Color Flush Liquid Blush, and I have the shade Rosewood. This is my favorite for every single day. Like it is the perfect amount of peach. It's buildable. I love the fact that it kind of gives you like medium pigment, right? Like you can sheer it out if you want. You can build it up if you want. This is literally perfect. And I love the fact that it shows up on the skin all day long. This also creates a perfect base if I want to layer powder products on top. It just makes the skin look so smooth and good and awesome and sexy and amazing. The Plush Blush Gel Liquid Blush is something that you see me use in a lot of TikToks because it looks like a nail polish. I have the shade Nimbo and this is a beautiful brick red, but let me tell you, this is sheer. And I know a lot of people don't love extremely sheer blushes, but this is a blush that's reserved for the days where I want like a beautiful kissed look, like super natural and it leaves the skin with a glass skin sheen. Something that I love about this gel blush is that even though it is super glowy on its own, it still looks good even if you put powder on top. There are some formulas where they might be glowy on the skin and then once you put powder on top, they turn into a cakey mess. Not with this, this is literally beginner friendly and foolproof. The Cherry Blossom Blushes. Now I have the shade Yurikobi and Kyoko. I knew that these were gonna be a favorite the moment I saw them on the Shop Masse website because one, the packaging is gorgeous and two, they are a shimmery, glowy blush. These are powdered blushes, but what I love about this is that the particles of shimmer that's inside are not chunky glitters. Like it literally adds a luminosity to your cheeks, so much so to the point where you don't really need to put highlighter on top of it. I travel with these blushes. They are buttery, easy to apply. But the only thing that I would say about these blushes is that there are only four shades available. That sucks. I wish there was more shades to choose from, but the shades that they do have are beautiful and I always reach for these. Okay, girly pops, let's talk about the highlighters. Now the first one is the Paw Paw Glow Within Illuminating Powder. I have the shade Brunch Date and this is beautiful if you wanna give your skin a wet look. Now this is not a heavy highlighter. It is a very buttery, soft, smooth formula. If you have touched the House Labs highlighter formula, this is very similar in texture. It's just very soft and light. It enhances your natural glow without looking too heavy. You can build it up, but it's not gonna get to anywhere near the other highlight that I'm going to talk about later. This is just a beautiful natural skin glow. Now this highlighter, the Ever Glow Highlighter, new favorite highlighter on the Shop Masse website, period. I have the shade Twilight, and this intensity of glow is so similar to the Pow lighters, but the only difference is that the Pow lighters are a loose highlighter formula, and this is a pressed highlighter formula. So freaking amazing. I love the intensity of glow that this has. It doesn't have a highlighter cast on the skin, even though it is a very light and blinding highlighter. I really love this. If you are still a highlighter girly, this is definitely for you. I definitely reserve these for the days where I'm doing a full glam look because I know that this will elevate my makeup. We finished up the complexion. Now let's go into the eyes. We have brow products and eye products. We're going to start with all the brow products first because there's a lot. So let's get started with the dual brow definer. I have this in the shade dark brown and dark brown is typically the color that I wear in my brows anyways with all brands. So this here is a dual brow pencil and this has the same formula as the brow definer and slim brow but just in one pencil. I like the fact that you have the option of having two pencils together so you don't have to use a separate spoolie if you don't want to. But for me I always use a spoolie in my brows just to comb out the color. I just like the fact that you kind of get the best of both worlds. If you don't feel like spending two dollars on two separate pencils you could still spend your dollar on this and you'll get both of them to try out or this is great when you travel because you have the option to really get hair like strokes with a slim brow and then just fill in the rest of your brow with the brow definer part it is genius 
I love that this is existing and I love the fact that they did not change the formula. Next we have the Easy Brow Styler. Now this looks very similar to the brow pencil from Fenty. Again, I have the shade Dark Brown. One side is the brow pencil that's similar in shape to the brow definer and then the other side, instead of a spoolie, you get a brush. I was a little disappointed in this because it did have a waxy formula, but I think it's waxy because of the brush that it comes with because the brush was able to really smooth out the color and really distribute the color throughout the brow evenly, which I'm not mad about, but it's just the fact that I am personally not a waxy brow pencil person in general. I find that with waxy pencils, it sticks to certain areas of my brows more than others, and I find that it can be a little bit more difficult to blend. So with that, and in comparison to a lot of the other brow products on the Shop Miss A website, this is definitely like not something I would recommend, but it's not necessarily horrible either. It's kind of just mid-range for me in terms of recommendation. This next one, you guys are literally gonna think I'm stupid. You guys are really gonna question, are you really a makeup artist? Are you really a professional? Because listen, I, this came with too much of a learning curve, okay? This is the Tinted Brow Fix Gel, again, in the shade Dark Brown. Now, I thought, I genuinely thought this was going to be the most easy brow gel on the market because of how thin the wand is. I was like, oh my god, I've never tried a brow gel that has like this thin of a wand. I'm really going to get into the hairs. It's going to look so natural. I'm going to have a little fluffy brow moment. Why is it so pigmented? It was so pigmented to the point where I thought, I think this is a brow tattoo. I think that this is going to stain my brows and I'm using it as a regular brow gel. And then I went on the website and I realized that's not the case. It's not a brow tint. It's not a brow tattoo. It's a legit brow gel. So I'm like, okay, for, is this made for me? Am I stupid? What's going on here? You literally see in my application portion, I'm literally having a hard time. And so for the other brow, I was like, okay, I'm gonna fix my mistake and I'm gonna go in with an even lighter hand. I don't know what is up with this brow gel or if it's the applicator, but it just really deposits pigment if it accidentally touches your skin. Like it just goes so haywire and I don't know how to control it. I truly don't. It is probably only good for those who have very thin, very dense eyebrows. For me, as you see, I have very sparse brows. I do have thick brows, but the hairs itself are very sparse. So it just causes me to really look like a clown at the end of the day. Don't get me wrong, I did try to make it work. I did use my cellar water to take away a lot of the pigment, but even yet, I just felt like there was so much my cellar water in my brows at one point that I was like, girl, this, this really isn't for me. Like the fact that I have to go in and fix so much of it in order for it to look good, I don't think I would recommend this. The next brow products are all clear. So what can go wrong? Nothing. So the first one is the Magical Girl Brow Lift Sculpting Wax. This is very similar to the ABH Brow Freeze. I don't have that product, but this is definitely on par with it. I get the best laminated brow effect. And even if I don't do a laminated effect and if I just do fluffy brows, this is perfect for fluffy brows. Your hairs will stay in place all day. They won't feel crunchy, they won't feel crispy, and they won't flake off. I really, really love this. So much so, I already have one in my client kit for those who really love that laminated effect. And even if you don't want laminated brows or even fluffy brows, this is great to really seal in the hair so that if you have any crazy hairs that go in all which direction, this will keep it in place. I also really love the Easy Brow Gel, again in the shade Clear. For days where I am literally just doing my makeup and I need to run out the door, this is so quick and easy. Less of a hold than the Magical Girl Brow Lift Sculpting Wax, but still enough hold to give me the fluffy brow effect. Some days I find that this will give me a slight sheen to my eyebrows, which I'm honestly fine with, like it doesn't bother me. But if it does bother you, I probably would skip out on this and just go straight for the Magical Girl Brow Wax. Next up is the Hold My Brow Brow Soap. Now I've already gone through an entire package of this 
in my bridal makeup kit and it was great but I felt like it kind of left a gray white cast in the eyebrows especially if you have darker hair so that's the reason why I replaced it with the magical girl brow lift because it's absolutely clear there's literally nothing wrong with this because it gives me the hold it gives me the beautiful fluffy brow but it's just the fact that I kind of have to gamble whether or not I am going to get that white cast in my brows or not. And I'd rather just not have to worry about that, which is why I just transitioned to the Magical Girl Brow Wax. We have a more recent launch from Miss A. This is the Shadow Stay Eyeshadow Primer, and this is in the shade Natural. This is very reminiscent in formula and texture to the original Urban Decay Primer Potion. It does go on clear, but a product like this can actually be used in more ways than just for eyeshadow. Yes, my eyeshadow goes on smoothly and it blends like a dream, but this also helps with under eye lines or smile lines if you just put this on before your foundation. So it's a great multi-use product and it's very affordable. I have the Cherry Blossom Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Lotus. This has eight colors and it's the perfect mini palette in terms of size at least. Let's talk about the formula. The pigments of the shadows are a hit and miss. I love that everything is really compact and makes it really easy for travel. However, the deep browns can definitely come off as patchy and some of the shimmers really need to be packed on in order for it to show through. You do get a really nice makeup look when you do use this palette. It just really needs a little bit of elbow grease in order for it to look cohesive and amazing. If you are a beginner with eyeshadow and just want to try something to like help with you know what colors go together or how to blend and mix and match colors this is a pretty good palette for you because it's only a dollar you get eight colors and I feel like that's a really good deal but if you're looking for an even better deal I would totally recommend the fly with me eyeshadows specifically the matte eyeshadow in the shade flourish this is a beautiful and buttery formula the matte blends out like a dream. I love the fact that I could build it up, blend it out, smoke it out. It's beautiful to work with. However, I feel like the shimmer eyeshadow, I have the shade Mayflowers. This one is a little bit harder for me to blend out on the eyes. It does still show up very pigmented, but I feel like I have to go in with so many more layers and dips in the pan for it to really just give that nice vibrant sheen on the eyes. I think overall, the matte shadows that are in the Fly With Me collection blend out so much better than some of the matte shades in the regular single magnetic pans that Miss A has. This just has a nice buttery formula. It just works way better. We're going back into the Venetian Romance collection. This is their creamy eyeshadow in the shade Betrothed. Now this is even butterier and creamier in texture than this ColourPop Super Shock shadows, but that is definitely what makes it good and bad at the same time. I found that this looks absolutely stunning and gorgeous on the eyes, but at the end of the day, because it's so creamy, it just creased. It just creased. And I never am one to really experience creasy eyeshadows, but it definitely makes sense with this product given that it's so emollient. So when using this product, I definitely recommend using this as a base, whether it's a base for other shimmers or base for glitters. This is perfect to adhere to other products so that it just shines a little bit brighter. I'm not sure if I talked about these on my YouTube channel yet, but I've definitely talked about them on TikTok and Instagram. These are a godsend. The gel eyeliners from Shop Miss A are literally a godsend. So reminiscent of the Marc Jacobs eyeliners. Remember those? Remember those? This is its little sister, the most affordable little sister ever. In the demo, I am using the shade Beach Babe. It is a beautiful hot pink color. The shade that I use the most is actually the purple one called Starfish, but I thought I'd switch it up for the video. I love these because not only are they super pigmented, but they are creamy and they last in the waterline all day long without setting them so good like if you were to get one thing from the shop Save like website from this video it would be these eyeliners these eyeliners are a game changer they are literally the best bang for your buck ever and you won't be disappointed speaking of being very much disappointed we have an eyeliner I just can't it's not for me and I'll tell you exactly the reasons why now this is a beautiful matte black eyeliner However, the actual eyeliner itself, the applicator is a hard and firm felt tip. 
This has no flexibility to it, so you are literally drawing the eyeliner on as if it's a freaking Sharpie. I love a brush tip. Shamase makes one of my absolute favorite eyeliners of all time, the Artista eyeliners. Those are my bad boys. Those are my babies, and I will ride till death do us part. That is my eyeliner, okay? So the fact that they had the audacity to come out with this, and for the tip to not even be thin, that just made me, I'm offended. I'm offended and I will not be recommending it. But if you don't care about the whole brush tip felt tip thing, it's a matte black eyeliner and it lasts on the eyes for a pretty long time. The last product in the eye category that I have a little bone to pick with is the Wonder Glitz Gel Topper. This is a glitter gel topper and I have the purple one. I have the shade Starlight. Now this is a very clear gel and it has purple glitter with some stars and I believe hearts are in here too. Oh my god, I can't even get it open. But listen to me. This type of product looks absolutely stunning and gorgeous on camera and you know, all the things. On the eyes, it's giving like the same the same feelings that I have about the ColourPop uh, Jelly Much eyeshadows. Not, is it the Jelly Much? Whatever glitter ones that they have. It just doesn't give me what it needs to give. It is a clear gel and the only thing that's colored in here is the actual glitter. So when you apply this over like a purple smoky eye, for example, it just looks so sparse and it just doesn't look cohesive. It's so sparse to the point where it just looks like, girl, what do you have on your eyes? It looks like that one meme where the little girl has a glitter on her eyes. It literally looks like that. I think if the gel was purple, if it was tinted purple, and if there was more cohesion with the glitter to gel ratio, I think that it could have been something. I think it could have been something. But even on its own, on top of a purple smoky eye, it doesn't set. I can't. I just took a two and a half hour break because I had a client come over to get her hair and makeup done. So let's move on into the lips. I have here the Sweet Milk Lip Balm and this is the dreamy version. It's a blue color but goes on clear and this, oh my gosh, the smell is identical to the Strawberry Shortcake Happy Meal Lip Balm. Do you guys remember where the hat turned into a lip balm? It smells identical to that. And a quick side tangent, I was a strawberry shortcake girly. I know there are so many people who are like, I love strawberry shortcake. No, you didn't love it as much as me, okay? And I will say that because when I get hyper fixated on something, I will be hyper fixated on something. And I've always been that way, okay? I've been crazy since the minute I was born, but I had all of the strawberry shortcake dolls with the scented hair. Do you remember that? And then I had the honey pie pony. Um, I had the other ponies too. I think there was two other ponies. I think there was three total. I had all of them. I had plush dolls. I had one that was about like um, four, four and a half feet tall. Like it was like a big, big pillow. It was like almost life size of strawberry shortcake. And I have the blanket still. I took the blankets from my mom's house to my current place. And I, I remember when I was feeling a little bit depressed, I texted my mom and I said, Mom, do you still have my strawberry shortcake blankets? And she was like, girl, you're 25. What's wrong with you? But yes, I do. Why? So I drive all the way over to my mom's house and I'm like scrummaging through the piles and piles and piles and piles of blankets. And I was like, Mom, it's not here. And I was like literally having a panic attack and I was literally crying. And she was like, Jasmine, keep on looking. It's there. I didn't throw it away. So I go in and I dig and finally at the, at the corner of the closet, there she was in all her glory. So now I have it here. And she's my depression blanket. I can't live a day without her. It's awesome, it's amazing, it's sexy. And I just think it's crazy how much a scent can matter. Um, this to me just brings me back and although it is like cute and like, you know, cheap looking lip balm, I will be using it just because of the way it makes me feel. Let's move on into lip liners. I have the retractable lip liner in the video that I'm showing you. I'm using the shade Satin, but I also really love the shade Silk, which is a beautiful brown. I like these because they're creamy, they're easy to apply, they aren't long lasting, but they just pair really well with any lip color that you're wearing. 
I do reach for these often because they glide on like a dream and they just are really creamy to work with. Um, but there are better lip liners just on the market in general. This is just really good if you're looking for just a reliable lip pencil. Now you guys have heard me ramble on and on and on about the gel liners from Shop Miss A. I get it, you've heard it, you're probably tired of it, but they do have a gel lip liner. The color that I have is Cowgirl, and I found that picking colors for this lip liner was honestly a little bit difficult. Um, I ended up picking a warm brown shade, which is fine to me. I just find that this, again, is not long lasting on the lips at all. I would say it lasts a little bit longer than the retractable lip liners, but overall, I just feel like the main difference between the two is that this has a little bit more pigmentation to it. So therefore, in a sense, it does look like it lasts a lot longer on the lips, but they last about the same amount of time. Let's talk about lipstick next. Now for both of these lines, I actually did a full try on video for Shop Miss A. I'll link the videos below so you could see me trying out all the colors. And you can also see them on my lips on the Shop Miss A website as well. The first one that I want to talk about is the Miss A and Friends lipsticks. Now these are just a traditional lipstick. They're very similar in texture to the So Smooth lipstick that's already pre-existing on the Miss A website. However, this is just a touch more hydrating on the lips. So it has a nice little sheen and I don't know, it's cute. It doesn't last a long time. It's your standard bullet lipstick. The colors are cute. They're not anything that I'm jumping up and down for. They are cute, reliable, easy. The Venetian Romance lipsticks. Now let me tell you something. These were so shocking to me because Shop Missy actually sent me this entire collection before it was launched in order to do the lip swatches for them for their website. And when I was swatching them, I didn't really get any um, details about what this lipstick was. So I was swatching them and I was like, oh my God, these are long lasting. So if I were to compare this formula to any formula at all, it's like you're meshing a traditional bullet lipstick with a long lasting matte liquid lipstick because it glides on like a normal lipstick, but it'll last on the lips literally for hours. It is insane. So when wearing this lipstick, the biggest tip I can give you is don't wear it with lip balm underneath if you want it to last on the lips all day. If you want it to feel like a traditional lipstick, wear your lip balm underneath and it'll just wear like a natural creamy lipstick. But this is definitely a formula I've never tried at all. Like it is insane. The wearability on this is so good. Um, so if you're looking for just a longer lasting lipstick that's easy to touch up on and it's affordable, this is definitely for you, but it's definitely not for somebody who has extremely dry lips. You guys know me. I'm not a gloss girly. I just find that I will go over the edge if I'm outside and it's windy and my hair gets caught in my gloss and smears it all over my face. I will literally have a bad day. So for that reason, I will only wear gloss if I'm taking pictures indoors or if I'm just sitting indoors and I just wanna do a makeup tutorial. The first product that I wanna talk about is something that I don't recommend and it is the Miss A and Friends Axel's Rainbow Paint Lip Gloss and this is the shade Tropical Sunset. Now, I think that this is a great gloss for what it is. It goes on clear even though it looks like it has a nice ombre effect. I just feel like the reason why I don't personally like this gloss and why I don't see myself using it anymore is because it smells and tastes like plastic. And that is just not appealing to me. Like there are so many other glosses that I can get by that don't have that smell. And honestly, like I feel like with glosses, even though I don't wear them, I know what I like and I know what I wanna put on my lips. And this is just one of those products that I just can't put on my lips just because of the smell. If you are looking for a clear gloss that actually smells good, this one is a lot better. This is another Miss A and Friends collection product. And this is Dreamy's Glitter Lip Gloss in the shade Blueberry. Now the glitter particles actually don't come on the lips heavily. Like it's so spread out, it's so sparse. Um, if anything, I'll probably get like two or three specks on my lips. Like it's not anything crazy. The only thing is, is that the doe foot on this is so tiny. I have to dip in here like four times in order to coat my entire lip. But the gloss itself stays on the lips. It has like this beautiful thickness 
to it where it's not goopy, but it just adheres to the lips beautifully. So for that, I think that this is definitely a little bit more worth it. The packaging is very cute. I know it looks very cheap and, you know, just childish, but I think it's very cute. And I would rather put this in my purse as a touch up gloss than the Axel one. I know everybody and their mother is trying to dupe out the Dior lip oil. And I'm very particular about dupes. Like you guys know me, like if it's like an alternative, I will say it's an alternative. If it's an exact duplicate, I will say it's a dupe. Now for this, at first glance, yes, it might look like the Dior lip oil, but it's very different in formula. This is the I Heart Do Lip Oil, and I have the shade Glow. Now this is a true lip oil. The texture of it is literally just like olive oil, like if I were to put olive oil on my lips. It's probably a little bit thicker than olive oil. I know I'm exaggerating, but it's literally like a true oil, and the Dior Lip Oil itself has thickness and stickiness because it's going to adhere to the lips. This has no type of stickiness or adhe adhesion adherence to the lips at all. In the demo, you guys saw that I used the gel liner underneath the lip oil and the lip oil completely made the lip liner disappear because of its true oil formula and texture. It just like, it was almost like an oil remover on the lips. Like it just took off all that color. So it works best just on its own with no lip liner underneath. Our final category is here and that is the miscellaneous. Let's start off with a product that just recently got launched, their ring light. This is super cute because it clamps onto your phone or your mirror and it gets fairly bright. So this is setting one, two, three, and then I think there's a flashing, yeah, a flashing setting. So you get a lot of settings in there. I think that's really convenient. It is rechargeable, which is nice, but the battery on this does not last a long time. I would say it probably lasts, like if I had it on consistently, probably about an hour, which is enough time for me to like film a TikTok tutorial, right? Um, it's great to toss in your purse, especially if you're gonna go out for the night and you wanna take a cute selfie with you and your friends. But I do have to be absolutely honest, I prefer this light more than this and that is just because you can clearly see this just has more LED bulbs in it so it's a lot brighter. This also changes from cool tones to warm tones to neutral. Um, so this one is actually by Great LPT. It's the mobile phone LED light. My sister got this for me for Christmas last year and I believe she got it on Amazon. This, let me show you. So this is their neutral setting. And you can already see in the video, it is just very bright. If I put it on my face, let's have it focus on me. If I have it on my face, this is what it looks like. And then if I put this one on the highest setting, that's what it looks like. It's not as bright when it's facing you. And then when I have it on my face, let's have it focus. When I have it on my face, it looks like this. It's still bright. It is still bright but it's just not as bright as this. You see what I mean? I think flashing my lights at the camera made me not look warm anymore. I think it just changed the setting on my camera. Whatever, it is what it is. The next two products are hair products and this is the Hair Tamer Finishing Wand. This packaging is very much giving the INH Quick Slip. Now the main difference is that INH is kind of like a milky clear. So not 100% clear, but the Shamus A1 is 100% clear. The wands itself are very, very similar. Let me take them out for you. I can't seem to get it to focus, so we're gonna have to put it up against my forehead, but this one is INH, this one is Shamus A. INH is just a little bit bigger, but they both have a slight curve to the wand. So if I were to just show you up close, they really do give the same effect to the hair. Um, I honestly have tried this side by side many times and I just find that they're both, at the end of the day, very similar textures and finishes and formulas. This is the INH side. This is the Shop Miss A side. They both will dry down and they won't feel sticky. They won't feel hard like a gel, but it does a job with keeping your hairs at bay, and I would say this is a dupe. 
The next product is the Hair Root Cover Powder. This honestly scares me a little bit any type of hair root powder usually does and that's just because i have black hair my hair is dark and you know finding finding a hair root powder or color or whatever the case may be for my hair is jarring because i'm pale i am i'm a pale girly and you know what going from like pale to to black um it's jarring so i wanted to show you guys how it applies like in real time as opposed to doing like the video now i will literally just stamp this on and kind of fade it back into the hairline and as you see it already looks a little bit darker it looks a little bit more full now the way that this works is that inside the cap there's a little pocket for pigment and the sponge itself just pushes in and you get product that way. Now, if I ever get too out of hand, I will take a clean blending brush and I'll just blend it in. And that way it looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more seamless. After getting over my irrational fear for these products, this is actually really amazing. I love the fact that it's not too powdery because there are some hair root cover-ups that give a really powdery matte finish and i have quite shiny hair so sometimes that looks even more unnatural but this really just blends in and i love the way how it doesn't feel heavy if i scratch my head it doesn't really go anywhere so i can apply it and forget about it and that's like the best thing about this product i saved the best for last and that is a2O is back. I was so devastated when A2O left a couple years ago. Like they just took out all of the products and I was like, man, I hope they bring her back. And they finally did. Now their first launch was the sponge. It is their cloud sponge. And I was skeptical when using this because when Shamase sent this to me, they were like, hey, by the way, you could use this with liquids and creams as well as powders. And I was like, girl, what? You're setting me up for failure. So when I first used this sponge, I used it dry because I wanted to see if it was very similar to a cushion foundation puff, and it is, but it's even squishier than that. Like this just gives you a beautiful bounce, and because it has a nice bounce, I just feel like my foundation just looks so much more smooth, and I just love the fact that it does not eat up your foundation. You can still see a little bit of foundation remnants on the sponge, but it's so easy to clean. I clean it just like my normal sponge with just a little bit of soap and water. The pigment comes out beautifully and it does work well with both creams and powders. I love it. Like I feel like I can transition from going to blending my foundation to using a loose setting powder and setting my under eyes and everything looks fine. Like I don't get any cakiness, nothing looks funny, nothing looks weird. It all looks really good and seamless. If you're looking to just try out a new sponge and want something that's easy for travel where you don't have to wet it or you don't have to consistently change your tools when doing your makeup, this is something that I would highly recommend looking into. Like it is so innovative, so plush, so expensive feeling that it just doesn't feel like it's a dollar. And A2O did launch a foundation. I actually just purchased it last night. So in my next Shop Missy Roundup review, you guys are gonna see me do what I've already done here and talk a little bit more about it. And just like that, you guys, we are completed with my long awaited Shop Missy Roundup review. I hope you guys all really enjoyed this one. The good, the bad, the ugly, that brow gel. But anyways, I hope you guys really enjoy this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and staying tuned. If you guys want to see any more videos like this, please let me know. Or if you have any other video suggestions that you want me to film, I'm happy to do so. And I thank you guys all for using my Shop Masse affiliate link when purchasing your Shop Masse products. It truly does help me and my channel out a lot. As always, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Peace out, Girl Scouts.